Hey guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with a video that I'm very excited for. I love doing these videos. I've been doing them like once a month, and they are romances I'm currently obsessed with, so I just get to sit and gush about my favorite romances I've been reading, and I've been reading so many good ones. These are all from the last three weeks. I have eight books to share with you over the last three weeks that I am just like blown away by, so I cannot wait to get to them. I will go ahead and link down below my other ones I've done. I think I've done this like three times now, but I feel like once a month is good where I can share with you just what I've been loving. These are great videos to go to just to see recommendations that I think everyone should read. Okay, the first one was the only traditionally published romance on here other than one historical I have, and I was very hesitant because I say this a lot, but traditionally published romances, meaning romances published by publishers and not like the author themselves, are not impressing me like over the past year I have been very disappointed in them but I picked up Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston and I saw a bunch of my friends reading it and the last one when Tori picked it up from Novel Life and was like this was amazing I was like okay I'm gonna love this so I read it it was a lot more serious than I thought it would be so it's a ghost romance our heroine is a ghost writer that's not where the ghost part comes in though she's a ghost writer for a romance author kind of like Nora Roberts and she though a year ago got her heart like obliterated by the guy she was dating she was betrayed by him and she doesn't believe in love anymore so she's like I can't write a romance and she has not finished her book and she has a new editor she goes to meet him he thinks that the heroine is actually the actual author's assistant and not the ghostwriter and so he's like nope no extension I need it in by like tomorrow and she's like this can't happen but then tragically her father passes away and so she was close with her father we got to see a couple of scenes of her I think talking about him and talking to him and he owns a funeral home and it's kind of the family business her sister is pretty much training to take it over and so the heroine hasn't been home though in like 10 years she sees ghosts like her father did and so she returns home and it's very somber and definitely much more on the serious side a lot of this book deals with grief and the heroine trying to overcome her father's death and trying to take on everything herself because she's someone who never asks for help. She's planning the funeral and trying to figure out how to write this book and then her editor shows up as a ghost and she starts falling in love with him. I know that was a lot to set this book up, but I want you to know this is definitely very serious but still lighthearted and still not feeling like it's a really heavy book, if that makes sense, because the heroine and her family are very not sensitive when it comes to death because they own a funeral home and they joke about death all the time. That's just how they deal with it, so that's how this kind of felt, but it was very sad watching her try to overcome losing her father and then wondering why her editor's around and falling for him, and she's like, I can't fall for a dead guy, and oh my gosh, it was so good. There is an HEA, it is a romance, but I just love this one so, so much. Perfect for the fall season too. I read it like last week and thought it was perfect to read at this time of year, so definitely pick this up if it's at all interesting to you. I, I just loved it. I'm obsessed. I love ghost romances and this just hit the spot. So the next book I have we're moving right into Christmas. So I am definitely in the Christmas mood. I know when I'm filming this, Halloween hasn't happened yet. I think I'm putting this video up before Halloween too. I know, I'm aware. But hear me out. This one was light Christmas. So I don't think Christmas actually happened yet in this book, but it takes place on a Christmas tree farm. It's Love Light Farms by BK Borison. This one is actually the old cover. There's a really pretty new cover, though I do like this one. And the author sent this to me herself, which thank you so much to the author for sending this to me. She sent me the whole series and I'm dying for the rest of the series. But the heroine owns a Christmas tree farm and she is having a lot of trouble sustaining it. And she had went, always went with her mom and it was just this very special place to her. And so she's determined to keep it running and keep it magical and so she decides to enter a contest on social media that the social media influencer who goes around to different businesses and pretty much like gives them a ton of business because she's featuring them on her social media accounts she decides to apply and lie and say she's doing the farm with her boyfriend because she knows the social media influencer loves a good love story and so she's like if i want to win and be featured and then like win a grand prize money i need to show this is a romantic story and i'm doing this with a boyfriend she ends up being featured and she has to find a boyfriend she's a best friend they have been friends for like eight years they do everything together and they're always around each other they like each other's families and she ends up asking him as a last resort though because she also asks other people in her life and they're like no you know you should ask and this one has such a good romance the hero is the one pining after the heroine and it was so so sweet and he's the one who's like i want this which is one of my favorite tropes because i like it when the hero is all in and the heroine's the one being like i don't know so i did give this four and a half stars it was a little slower in the middle and i did though appreciate the fact that it was like lighter christmas so you can start reading this like 
leading up to Christmas because we do have Thanksgiving and it's more so surrounded by the fact that they have a Christmas tree farm and I just love the setting. It was just such a cozy, adorable, small town romance and I'm obsessed with the side characters and I cannot wait for their books because a social media influencer gets a book with one of the guys who works on her farm and it's just gonna be so good. So check this out if you have not yet. Highly recommend. Then one I was super shocked by because this author I used to be obsessed with like four years ago she was one of my absolute favorite authors and then I hit a lull with her books where I was not enjoying her releases so I stopped reading her new releases and then she started blowing up and so I read her new releases and I love them so I've been going back and reading some of the releases I missed and that's Close Quarters by Candy Steiner. I was a huge fan of the Palm South University series and A Love Letter to Whiskey and Weightless and like the Becker Brothers series like, I was obsessed with all those but then she started coming out with some like okay books that I wasn't the biggest fan of she was going away from her angst this one was angsty. It takes place on a yacht. So I'm a huge fan of Below Deck on Bravo. My sister and I love watching reality TV. I know. We love Below Deck though. Like, obsessed. So this one it takes place on a yacht and her boyfriend's a yachty. So her boyfriend works on yachts all the time and it's the summer after they graduate college and she is a photographer and she's planning on going around Europe taking photos and he's going to work on the yacht in Europe and they'll meet up at the end of the summer. But they end up meeting the owner of the yacht and the owner's like why don't you stay here and take photos for the yacht and like you can see all the places we go and it'll be perfect for you and she's like well yeah that'd be great and the boyfriend's excited too and they end up spending the summer on the, the yacht and it's her romance though with the owner of the yacht a billionaire sweet hero I loved him so much so much tension and angst there is cheating in here she has her boyfriend who she's been dating for years but he's definitely a different person when he's yachting and she is not someone who likes to party she doesn't drink a lot and if you've seen below deck like they love to party in their free time. They work long hours and they put a lot of time into working. They like to have some fun and the heroine's not into that. Her and her boyfriend are kind of like at a rocky point in their relationship and the hero, Theo, is super into her and wants to spoil her and spend time with her and help her achieve her dreams and he is the sweetest ever but it's super angsty because she knows she shouldn't be doing it because she has a boyfriend and she's hesitant to break things off because it's like comfortable to her and she's been dating him for a long time but it's so good. Definitely more of a summer read, but the angst in here. Give me a billionaire hero who just wants the heroine. And a little bit of cheating in there too. I love that angst. So check this out. Then another one I cannot stop talking about and I don't know like I had no expectations for this book because this author has never written something like this before but one of her series is my absolute favorite. So that's Devil of Dublin by B.B. Easton. I love her Praying for Rain series and she just like writes out of the box. And so this one is kind of mafia and it is childhood friends to lovers. They meet when they're kids in the woods behind her grandfather's house. She's there for her grandmother's funeral in Ireland and she meets him and he is like the devil child. He's being raised by a priest who's very abusive and people think that he was like spawn of the devil kind of thing and so he has a very rough childhood and she's like his bright spot. She only comes for one week every summer and so she decides with her mom to come back every year to visit her grandpa and they see each other and it's like just the magical part of their summer and then something happens and she stops coming and she goes through a really really rough childhood as well. When she stops coming she has to go live with her father and she experiences abuse and assault during that part of her life as well so they're both very damaged people but she comes back engaged to someone else and they get reconnected because her grandfather dies. So they, she goes to her grandfather's funeral. She's like 21 now. And she meets him. He is now known as the Devil of Dublin. He works for the Mafia. And he's in bad stuff. And they have to fight bad people and figure out how they want to be together. So that's all I want to say about this book. It is so good. Very, very dark because they both have very dark pasts. They both go through a lot of dark things. There's lots of violence in here because it's them writing from Mafia people and like He's known as, like, the Devil of Dublin. He kills a lot of people. But it's just, like, they're soulmates. Like, that is what this romance is. It has, like, kind of a magical feel to it, which I loved. And it was just amazing. I could not stop reading it, and I could not stop thinking about it once I finished it. So, read this book. Then, so, these... I had the best reading vlog. So these three, so Devil of Dublin, the next two, were all in the same reading vlog I did where I was reading new releases. You guys, these books were like phenomenal. So check that vlog out if you haven't yet. But next one is Fractured Sky. My paperback finally came in from Catherine. She sent it to me. I did get to read an arc of this. And oh, I did get this one from a PR company as well. I just want to make sure I just close that when I'm talking about these. But this one was sent by the author. But like, I've been obsessed. I feel like every one of these obsessed videos, I have a Catherine Cowles book in it because I've been obsessed with her over the past like 
like three months. I've read her entire backlist and this is her newest release and it was amazing. So this is Ramsey and Shiloh's story and there's lots of horses in here. It's a very small town. They work on a horse rehabilitation farm where they are really abused and scared horses that come to them and they help them learn to like trust humans again. And so that's Ramsey's farm. Shiloh was kidnapped when she was young. This is book five in the series. So we see the repercussions of her kidnapping on her siblings and everybody related to her throughout the books. And then she finally gets her book. We've been waiting five books for this book and she is ready to be taken seriously and she hates how her parents coddle her all the time and she just wants freedom and so she decides to move and Ramsey is someone she kind of sees around because she'll go and visit his land and just sit and watch him and he's okay with that. They're both very broken standoffish people. They don't like to be around people or trust people or let anybody in but they trust each other and so he says you can live on my property and work for me and she does and it's their romance and there's always some suspense in Catherine's books so someone is trying to harm some people in here and that's all I want to say about that but if you want two broken really broken people who had things happen to them out of their control that really affected them definitely read this book it's so so good and very very slow burn because they really don't trust people and they take a long time to let each other in but it's so good the next one is Heartless by Elsie Silver I did get an arc of this and Oh my gosh, is this amazing? This one was even better than Flawless. I think it's Heartless. I always get the names wrong, but this one, our hero, is a single dad, grumpy farmer, and he is just so, so amazing. So he needs a nanny, and he doesn't trust anybody with his kid, and so the heroine for book one is like, I have someone, they're gonna be your babysitter, and that's it. You're not gonna argue, you're just gonna deal with it, and so it's the heroine who is the best friend from the heroine of book one and she comes into town she's really rich she is like a an equestrian but her horse got injured and so she's like out of a job really for the summer and doesn't really need to work but she decides to and falls head over heels for the sun i just really love the sun's character in this book and the banter between the hero and the heroine was amazing the family in here was amazing like the hero's dad i loved him i loved seeing the characters from book one i love the steam in here super super steamy and i loved kate journey of trying out things that he likes instead of just dedicating himself to work and being a father and so it was so good highly recommend checking this one out check out the entire series though books one and two are amazing i am obsessed with elsie silver and i will read anything she writes then i have the words by ashley jade this is huge i didn't think i'd love it because i don't love rockstar romances as much anymore but this was so so good i feel like i've talked about this a lot lately but this one our heroine and hero meet in high school she is bullied a lot for her weight and so she doesn't trust people very easily. She has a very close relationship with her dad. She has to tutor him though and they start falling for each other but then he betrays her in a horrible way and he leaves and makes it big with his band and so now he's a rock star and she is trying to take care of her dad who has dementia now and she is really struggling and so the hero is also really struggling. He has gone into the spiral of sex, drugs, and alcohol and he is not on a good path especially after losing a bandmate and so they keep on trying to have sober companions for him but he sleeps with all of them and so his friend in the band who knew them growing up was like I know someone who hates his guts and would never sleep with him and will get her to be his new sober companion so they approach the heroine she says no she hates him but they give her an amount she can't say no to and so she is his sober companion and this romance was so good super super emotional and I feel like it didn't even feel this long I loved all the side characters I love the band members I loved how the heroine grew so much and was going after what she wanted and I cannot recommend this enough. It's big, but it goes by very fast, so don't let that intimidate you. The last one's A Historical Romance, and I'm actually currently reading it, but I have to talk about it because I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I am about halfway through, and that is A Matter of Temptation by Stacey Reed. I'm listening to the audio because there's a new narrator, so I listened to the audio of My Darling Duke, book one. I hated the audiobook and so I physically read books two and three, but this one, I think, yeah, there's three now, and this one... I'm listening to an audio. It's a new narrator. It's so good. Our heroine is a twin and she lives on her state with her brother, but they have like no money left. Their parents died and the brother is trying everything he can to get money. His loan was denied. So he tries to gamble and tries cheating and then almost gets caught. So then he's in a duel. And so the heroine is like, you're going to die. You're, you're an idiot. And so she decides to go in his place without letting him know because she's better at sword fighting than him. And it's with like rapiers. I think that's what they're called. 
and so she shows up she duels this earl and she wins he figures out who she is and decides to hire her to be a secretary so that's where this goes yeah so i'm just making this was all on the back so that's pretty much the very beginning like the first hour and a half and it's their romance and there's undeniable chemistry between them they're working together she's super sassy and definitely has an attitude towards him so i love their banter I love the Earl so much like he is not really into society at all and he has a lot of goals business wise and just I love it I love it so much I'm so excited to see where it continues and so I love that I'm loving a historical cannot recommend this enough but definitely check it out I'm excited to finish it and those are the books that I'm recently obsessed with let me know if you have read any of these or if there are other books that you're obsessed with that you think I need to read right away let me know and that's all I have as always thank you so much for watching have a good day bye